This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Arnold, welcome to Tech Talk. Hello, Frank. Good afternoon. Uh, I, you know, a, semantics just simply can't keep up anymore to try to describe things as far as the technology, the speed of, tra- of change that's going on. Um, I can kind of remember when cloud started to come up, and there were a lot of people from uh, literally the decades ago that remembered some of the early issues of what cloud meant. And then now, obviously, today it's morphed and evolved like so many other things into what it is now. I guess where I'm headed is is that um, the whole area of marketing, the whole idea of media, the whole idea of uh, messaging, um, just like every other vertical, is involved in extreme disruption, uh, lots of things changing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, digital marketing and digital marketing solutions. Uh, from your perspective, uh, kind of uh, where are we at and where is it going? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of change, like you mentioned, going on in the industry. I think what has uh, transpired kind of in the late uh, 2000. Tends into the early part of this decade, you know, the advancement of technology is creating a lot newer ways to grab people's attention, um, <clears throat> whether that's with websites, uh, with the advent and growth in mobile, uh, and now, you know, kind of looking forward for the next five to ten years, <clears throat> the ideas around uh, virtual reality and artificial intelligence mm. getting baked into um, telling those stories as well. Well, that's what, again, the interesting thing from, from a, uh, a, a company perspective, from an enterprise perspective, uh, let's, let's call it social media, for example. I was mentioning terminology. Um, I was saying to a, a um, relation that I had uh, last week, a meeting, that uh, social media is not what it appears to be and that social media is media. It isn't uh, Facebook or Twitter. Uh, it's the evolution of this whole radical disruption in terms of how people will be communicated with and and how those people will engage or embrace what products and brands are being communicated to them. I mean, I was in a meeting with a a game designer and developer, and when you listen to some of the approaches they take to how they attract uh, new players and retain new players, um, and you start thinking about gamification, you start thinking in terms of of how widespread and ultimately ubiquitous it's going to become over, I think, an extremely short period of time. Um, give us your insight and your perspective on that. How do you feel about um, what, for all intents and purposes, marketing is going to look like, communication, messaging, storytelling, whatever terminology you want to use to describe it? Certainly, uh, traditional media almost is insignificant or maybe in the future won't even matter. Um, give us your thoughts in terms of uh, what the next couple of years, next few years are going to mean in that whole space. Yeah, I think it's just a continued proliferation. Uh, your comment about certain media no longer being relevant, I, I don't necessarily buy into that because, uh, you know, folks five, ten years ago started to say that conferences would no longer happen, right, that people would always just – in the future, everybody will just participate uh, – um, you know, digitally or mm-hmm. through some kind of online medium. Well, we haven't reached that. If anything, over the last uh, three to four years, conference attendance is probably up <laughs> really? uh, much higher than than anything. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to tell me we're not a paperless society? No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, same thing, same concept that sure. the newspaper was going to go away or magazines were going to go away. Not true. Now, certainly, readership has changed and evolved, but I think the end. Uh, the end uh, goal here is that, again, there's going to be proliferation. There's going to be new technologies and media uh, to deliver your story, your message, your brand, whatever it might be. Uh, and the key is is that how you deliver that across those different channels has a unique quality, a differentiated quality that allows it to stand out regardless of medium uh, that allows the the reader or the customer or the, the person who's looking to interact with you uh, to – reach that or get that same impression, whether they look at it online or offline uh, and in whatever context, whether it's at a conference, at a hospitality event, or whatever it might be. The ultimate goal is you want to give that very uh, consistent, unique, differentiated messaging in regardless of the channel. Well, that, 
you 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 make it sound easy. Just what you just said. You know, the Eastern philosophers say that the uh, solution is simple. It's the implementation that becomes the challenge. You know, when you talk about uh, finding that sort of right formula that uh, uh, is going to communicate. When you've got so many choices, and you can, I guess, quote unquote, demassify to the extent that you can target literally to a single individual, and not just customization from a name standpoint, but kind of embed your messaging within their environment and. I'm, you mentioned even data in, in the collection of, of um, profiling to the degree that you can begin to anticipate, um, you know, what is it, predictive and, and prescriptive type information that allows you to take proactive rather than reactive. That's certainly not like any other media experience. I mean, I can literally go back to a time when you ran a trade journal ad and you got a list of leads uh, from the uh, want more information cards that they supposedly filled out and sent in. Um, that's nothing uh, even closely remote to what a click or a thousand clicks or a million clicks can mean in terms of a uh, in a uh, digital communication strategy that is uh, really, really impacting and really, really working. I, I got to ask you this because I think our listeners are going to, if I don't answer, ask it, they're going to, they'll say, "What were you thinking?" And I'm talking about, uh, yeah, is it? It's Yalo, and it's a pretty interesting name. But what does Yalo mean? How did that? How did that get around to calling it Yalo? Yeah, so one of the things I learned when I was starting out and starting a business that uh, there are no English words left or yeah. URLs left to name anything. Everything's been used up, and even ever combinations of English words are used up. So Listen, I jokingly say you can put a monkey on a on a laptop and type in a bunch of mumbo jumbo words and try to register, and it'll be taken. Yes, uh, so it makes it very tough. Um, so one of the things I decided early on was uh, to offshore and uh, look at a different society, a different culture for their language and uh, find a term that would be suitable for what we really wanted to try to accomplish. And so uh, Yalo means soul in Fiji. And for us, that really is kind of the, the way and the approach of how we attack our clients' challenges in our everyday work. So we look to the way that gets embodied is we look to film art, music, and sports uh, for inspiration um, for whatever the project is we're trying to do for a client, whether that's a website, an email campaign, a conference booth, or a piece of collateral. Uh, we really want to bring, give that project, whatever it's going to be, uh, a very specific soul, and that's kind of how we uh, look to do that. Um, uh, that's pretty powerful. I, it was, as you were talking, I remember being a young executive and. Um, I had a, uh, um, a desktop pad, um, kind of dating myself kind of thing, but it was a time when you would have put a pad on your desk because you didn't have a computer in front of you. And uh, I always fantasized about one day I was going to be successful, I was going to have a Porsche. And I had actually a photograph of a Porsche under my desk pad, and it was sort of something I just kept focused on and focused on. I guess where I'm going, Arnold, I, you got to focus on Fiji? Is that what the plan is? <laughs> That's what my team likes to tell me, that at some point one of our off-sites will be in Fiji. So. I don't, don't, kid, <laughs> you, don't lie to me now. I know you, you, the whole thought, great story, and it, it certainly is extremely powerful and meaningful. But as you were talking, I thought, Porsche, Fiji. I like the way <laughs> this guy's thinking, no doubt about it. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the um, extremely competitive environment that you operate in, a lot of demand. Uh, again, I'm always citing Steve Jobs about people don't know what they want until they see it. Um, I'm sure that a lot of the things that you guys do, most people don't even realize exist or can be thrown into their arms, uh, their marketing arsenal, if you will. Um, share some things that, that are unique about Ye Yalo and, and, uh, and uh, uh, why it matters to a potential prospect or even a customer that you're currently working with. Yeah, I think there's two things I would know. One, um, kind of our approach to how we look through that lens of film, art, music, sports. Um, <clears throat> you know, any projects that, that we do in this space always starts with a creative conversation. Uh, that creative conversation with our clients uh, typically includes a whole series of words and ideas and hopes and dreams of what they want this project to be. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, that all needs to be uh, coalesced or brought into a central focus on uh, to give kind of an emotional center or compass for the project. And the way we kind of look to bring all of that into focus, into a, a singular concept or idea, is we ask the question back to our client stakeholders, if this project were a song, what song would it be? Hmm. Um, and it's a great exercise for them because, again, it gets them out of their usual way of looking at the challenge and how they're trying to solve it, uh, as they've done in the past, to, to take a different angle on it. 
Um, and it's a really good test to see how well they can work amongst themselves to come up with that single answer. Uh, because that single answer then really becomes, like I said, the emotional centerpiece of the project and really propels all the decision-making uh, from a creative standpoint as we go through the process. So that's, I think that's you know, one, one aspect, uh, I would say, that makes us a little bit different, kind of how we attack these challenges and exemplifies the whole film art music sports uh, approach. Um, second thing is I think our diversified background of us as a team, I wouldn't say that, you know, our whole team is necessarily uh, the typical, I'm doing air quotes, uh, it, you know, for those on, <laughs> listening, but the, the typical agency background, right? So uh, we're a, a, a blended mix of different skills and talents that have come together from uh, healthcare, from con big five consulting, mm. supply chain, software, hospitality even, uh, to kind of bring uh, these different skill sets together and then obviously layered in with a healthy dose of, of typical agency background folks. So that unique blend of skills and talents uh, kind of gets blended in there together as a smoothie and I think gives us a different approach to how we're solving things for our clients. And we've even kind of went through our rebrand last year and uh, dubbed ourselves a, a unified, zesty, funky, thirsty tribe. <laughs> I like that better than we do stuff. <laughs> I, I think that one got worn out a few years ago. I don't mean by you guys, but it seems like yeah. there's too many of the people, especially in the marketing and video production field, and that's kind of the niche I play in a little bit, is that uh, we constantly say, well, what do you do? Well, we do stuff. You know, they never get any clarity out of it. Let's let's talk a little bit about uh, from you know from a, um, who you are and, and telling a potential client what you do is one way to communicate. The other way to communicate is from that from the client's perspective, saying, tell me about something you've done. Tell me something that actually you guys got involved in and made an impact and it worked. You know, success stories are always good. Tell me some. Sure. Yeah, I think one that I'll kind of give in a little bit of depth and then follow up with a few other touch points, but uh, one here recently really gives a good cross-section of the type of work that we do. Uh, so last year, Microsoft Ignite was in town, huge conference down at the World Congress Center, uh, for our client that works in that space as a technology client, uh, we help them redo their website with, with making it a lot more vibrant and exciting uh, for the IT customer base that's the up and coming, right, that's uh, more of the millennial. Uh, part two of what we did with them then was to kind of take that experience and that vibe into their booth experience that was going to be designed and, and, and put out on the show floor during Microsoft Ignite as well. Uh, so, again, kind of my point earlier, making sure that whichever way somebody comes in the door of finding out who you are, what your brand and your products are about, that they kind of – it gets reinforced with the, whichever touch points they continue to have with you. Uh, the last piece, then, of that uh, relationship with this client, uh, they held a hospitality event um, that we helped ideate and concept, basically, uh, uh, it happened right in the middle of, in, of Microsoft Ignite, and it turned out to be an event for 2,500 people. It was right on Marietta Street, where for those of you who know where Marietta is, uh, right down there by uh, the College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, we blocked off that strip there for at rush hour on a Wednesday afternoon, um, and it was basic premise was a block party. We brought in four bands. We had a national comedian. He had actually won Last Comic Standing on NBC. We had gaming stations. We had a VR, virtual reality kind of carpool karaoke setup, mm -hmm. food, beverages, and you name it. So the whole kind of integration of the experience for the customer of, of hitting the website, coming to the booth, coming to this hospitality event, and all the elements that were there around it kind of driving that same uh, you know, feeling and, and vibe that this client was, was endeavoring to accomplish. So I think that's a good cross-section. You know, we've done other things here recently. We just launched an e-commerce site uh, for a retailer up in the Midwest, uh, did a regional bank's brand site mm -hmm. here recently. Um, we just opened a new customer innovation center for a client outside of Boston where all of the design treatments throughout the center uh, were done by us. And then probably lastly, just to note, uh, we've got a – a monthly newsletter that we design and produce every month from scratch uh, for a client that goes out to two, over 200,000 uh, readers per month. Well, it's challenging as it is, uh, you know, we constantly talk about you can't come at things directly. You know, you kind of got to reach out as if you were putting your two hands together towards a point of conversion. I mean, we've talked about 
um, conversion for a long time, but the reality is that everybody's doing the same thing, only different, and that over the course of the next decade, certainly over the next 20 or 25 years, um, there's going to be a lot of people basically in, in the marketplace providing single source, uh, either one way or the other. And so how do you differentiate yourself as a – I'm talking about a, a prospective client – uh, a lot's going to have to do with how you package your messaging and how you deliver that without question. You mentioned earlier, and, and uh, I, I agree with you to an extent that maybe traditional media isn't obsolete, but certainly it's not going to have the kind of impact to the target audience that that customer that you were working with would have done simply because you were communicating, quote-unquote, in the language of the prospect and, and not just simply at reach and frequency of, the, of what would have been the traditional marketing ploy um, and strategy of the past. Um, it's going to be interesting when you talk about artificial intelligence, when you talk about Internet of Things, when you talk about ubiquitous technology, even wearables for that matter, I mean, how you will be alerted to what and when and where, uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. i got a feeling you've got a, an opinion about that. I guess tell us where I'm headed, uh, I guess, Arnold, is uh, where's it all going? I mean, let, don't even try to go out much more than, if you can, 20 years, but let's take a look <laughs> at the next decade. Uh, future direction of both Yalo and what you guys are doing and where it's all heading? Yeah, so, you know, we've touched on the, the terms of AR and VR and AI. Uh, we really think there's a lot of power and possibility and, and opportunity with those technologies uh, for clients to be able to tell their story in that unique, differentiated way. Uh, to your point, we talk to our clients a lot about how are we going to cut through the noise mm. of what you want to say that, your competitors or not even non-competitors aren't already saying that creates a whole uh, dimension of, of, of haze out there that you need to cut through. So we um, <clears throat> really need to be very laser focused on how we create that story, the language that's used, the specifics of what makes them different, whether it's their brand or their product or their service, and then bringing that to life. So we kind of, our exercise of working with our clients goes through a three-step process. So one is uh, what we call the communication side, which is really coalescing that story. How do we create that story that is sharp as unique and different? Uh, once we have that, then it's the content side of how are we going to tell that story, whether it's certain type of graphics, whether it's video, how the writing is done, etc. Uh, and then lastly is, is the channel. Where are we going to put this? Um, so email campaign, website, at a trade booth, in a VR, uh, virtual reality, headset story, whatever it might be. So we kind of go, th we, we attack the, the challenge in those three steps. And what we see in the future is, again, kind of newer technologies giving us uh, the power to tell these stories in a, a, a different dimension, you know, VR being fully three-dimensional, mm. um, and being able to put yourself right in, to scenarios or situations you may not be able to do in, in these other forms of media. So, for example, software companies being able to tell their story about how they make data work in multiple locations and you being a part of, of the data flow as you live inside of or you're, you're experiencing this virtual reality uh, story that you're the piece of data moving. Um, and that gives you the understanding of how their technology works to solve these problems. So uh, the opportunity to tell those stories in that very, uh, you know, expanded way, putting you inside the life and situation of what is happening inside the technology, which you wouldn't otherwise see, mm -hmm. makes it pretty cool. Well, it's, it's, uh, it, you could have said it uh, five years ago, you're going to say it 10 years from now, and that is, it's just absolutely, totally amazing. I mean, it truly is. It changes all the time, but then you embrace change and, and, uh, the possibilities are literally endless. Hey, uh, Arnold, I, I, I got to tell you, you guys must be doing something right because we hear a lot of buzz about what you, what's happening over at your place. And, and uh, um, all I can say is um, continued good luck, base, great 2017. I got a feeling you're in the right place doing the right stuff. So success is, uh, you know, investors say invest in the inevitable. I think uh, it is inevitable that Yalo is going to be doing some really fascinating things and the market's going to be talking about it. But equally as important is uh, you guys taking the time to be part of TAG, taking time to be part of TAG, tag Radio. Um, we appreciate that because we know what kind of busy schedule the guys like you are, are in the competitive market that you're operating in. So thanks a lot for taking time out of, uh, I know, a real busy schedule to join us for a couple of minutes on Tech Talk today. Yeah, Frank, appreciate it as well, uh, having us on the show today. 
anyone in, that's interested in hearing a little bit more about YALO, or what we do and how we do it, feel free to hit our website at digitalyalo.com, Y-A-L-O, that is, and, uh, or shoot me an email at arnold.huff.com, M-A-N, at digitalyalo.com. Thank you for the time.